Right now, we're in what is seasonally the strongest part of the year for tech, at least historically. But the semiconductor companies have been struggling of late. A real hit or miss. We've got to figure out what's going wrong here. Today, we may have gotten our answer when Abnet, the largest supermarket of technology in the world, reported this morning. I I've always viewed this Abnet as a terrific tell for the rest of tech because they're the number one distributor of electronic components, including semiconductors. And then the company also has a tech solutions business, much higher value added, where they're among the largest distributors of IT hardware, software, and services. With over hundreds of thousands of clients, this company has its finger on the pulse of tech. Now, when Adnet reported, uh, reports a two-cent earnings beat off of an 88-cent basis, revenues that came in uh, a tiny bit shy of estimates, up 8.1% for the year over year, basically mixed guidance, tells you something's awry, okay? I think Adnet actually did pretty well in a tough environment. Wall Street doesn't seem to agree with me as the stock shed a couple of points today, but it's been a red-hot stock. So let's dig deep with, with Rick Amati, the CEO of, of Adnet, find out more about how his company's doing and where the industry is headed. Mr. Amati, welcome back to Mad Money. Hello, Jim. Always a pleasure. All right, well, Rick, first of all, you got the dividend. So I know the future is bright because you said you would only do that if you felt there was great long-term growth. So uh, this notion of mixed guidance doesn't really uh, maybe tell it the, as accurate a picture as the fact that you put the dividend in. Yeah, Jim, we felt it was an appropriate time to incorporate a more systematic return of capital to shareholders. We've been busy with our buyback. You'll remember we've talked about that on previous quarters. And then we, we thought it was a good time now to find a way to manage the overall cash for looking for future growth wherever we can. We, we're still in the M&A business. We're still in the buyback business. But a part of that cash flow, we felt it was an appropriate time to go ahead and make that commitment. Now, at the same time, I know when I go through, when I parse your call uh, this afternoon and all, all the great stuff you put out, it's clear that you guys yourselves are really trying to wrestle with why tech is so uneven. Is it because tech isn't tech anymore that things have changed in a secular basis that we can't look at tech as one entity? You know, Jim, there are uh, multiple dimensions of change. You and I have talked about them in the past. In the IT world, there's big data, there's the cloud and analytics. Uh, there's lots of individual changes taking place there. Even in semiconductors, what's going on with the latest telecom build-outs? What's going on with the latest new consumer devices? But that's technology. That's the way it's been for 30 years. We've talked about Moore's Law in the past and all of the changes that brings overall. So this is the world we live in. Today is really no different, other than I would tell you, the pace of change, I believe, is accelerated. So it's it's putting even more pressure on all of us to try to keep pace with what's going on. Because when external change exceeds the rate of internal change, that's when you have problems. But even in these great secular trends like cybersecurity, we had Palo Alto Networks on this, a really terrific company. They themselves are having difficulty predicting six months from now. Yeah, I, you know, I wish I could add uh, some more clarity to the crystal ball, Jim, but we feel the same way. So what we've got to do is keep pay attention to our dashboards, keep talking to our customers and suppliers, keep factoring in what they're seeing in the marketplace and put them in the best position to capitalize on accelerating their growth. Now, I, I, you are a no-excuses guy, but at the end of the conference call, it was clear you could have said that the government shutdown did hurt people, right? That we could have, but I can't draw a straight line to it there, so I'm not going to tell you what I don't see. All right. Now, uh, Europe uh, it's starting to come back. It, it, you know, we had uh, Ford today saying Europe's coming back. We had DuPont. They're saying Europe's coming back. You're still seeing tepid growth in Europe. Yeah, so it's interesting. On two sides of our business, Jim, remember two worlds at Avnet, components and computers. Right. On the component side of our business, we've had two quarters now of consecutive year-on-year -year growth for our components business in the high single digits this year, I mean this quarter for year-on-year. -year. Our computer business has been lagging. It's been down 11 percent year-on-year in the IT spend. We've got a particular challenge, I think, in one of our key markets there. We've got, a, we've got part of it's our, our execution. It's not all a market phenomena. So components doing well. The computer products business less well. Some of it self-inflicted, and we're on it. Do we have to worry about a, a slight inventory build, or is that just going to be dissipated by the time the year's over? Yeah, some of it was to build up for some scheduled uh, fulfillment orders that are coming in this quarter as well. And if you look at our overall velocity metrics, they actually improve slightly on a sequential basis. So to us, it's never about managing just raw, absolute inventory dollars. We want to make sure we got the right profile and the proper velocity to be able to continue to support the needs of our customers. You know, Rick, you're, your company's probably got more of a global reach than anybody we've been talking with in a long time. So you're, you're talking to a lot of different people. Do people mention the United States as being a country that was at one point a great country that now seems to be perhaps uh, run by a government that's totally dysfunctional? Do they bring it up? 
You know, Jim, I would tell you, it's a popular topic. People, when I travel Asia or Europe, they do want to talk the American political situation and ask my opinions as well. But we're still a great country. We've still got the number one uh, GDP and economy on the world. And it's all interconnected. We're not isolated by any means. And uh, again, being a global company, we see that firsthand every day in our business. And actually, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to leverage that global scale and scope into competitive advantage where we can. All right, terrific, Rick. Once again, I think stock overreaction. It's been such a good stock in a very difficult industry. Thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Always a pleasure, like I said. That's Rick Amata, CEO of Abnet. Told you he was going to give you a dividend. Boom, you got the dividend. Business is strong. I think it's going to stay strong in 2014. Stay with Kramer.